you know, now we have our timeline, and I know I keep going over this, but I want to make sure that we understand that we've cut up the audio, we put in the sound bites, we've trimmed it up, so we've really tightened it up. So now what we want to do is we want to be able to put in the B-roll so that while the commentator's speaking, your eye is trained and you have something to look at. I mentioned a three-point edit before in the last segment, and what I want to do is just kind of go over that just a tad bit more. A three-point edit is exactly how it sounds. It's three different points. The first two points always tell you the duration, and the last point tells you where you want it to start. In other words, we were doing the three-point edit before, we were putting an in and out up here in the player window, and then our cursor was our third point down here, and we took that end point down to this end point, and it dropped down. Now, what we're going to do here with B-roll is a little bit of a reverse three-point edit, if you want to call it that, if that's even a term, because the duration is going to be really depend more upon my commentator than it is on me. So what I'm going to do here in the very beginning is I'm going to go ahead and bring my controller all the way to the back, because remember, I wanted to start with video and then have the audio come in. And I'm going to go ahead and set an end point by selecting the I key. And then I'm going to listen to my reporter. Utah Lake located in the Wasatch Mountains in Utah. Okay, right there. And I'm going to set an out point. So here's my duration right here. Now, before I'm going to come up here and even find this, what I want to make sure to do is protect this audio down here because of the fact that I've tightened it up. I have my main audio the way I want it. I have two different ways of doing that. Number one, I could just turn off the block. Now that it's dark, whenever I use these two buttons or the right or left bracket key, then my first track won't come down. Or, if I really want to, I can right-click right here and say Track Lock and lock that track to where nothing can happen to it so it can't get messed up in any way, shape, or form. Now, I'm going to go ahead and unlock it because of the fact that I'm used to working this way. But, you know, if you feel more comfortable locking a track and making sure that it's completely safe, please do because there's no wrong and right way to do this. If it gets the job done, gets it done correctly, and it's comfortable to you, that's what's most important. So I set my in and out point right here, and what did she say again? She sat there and said, oh, Utah Lake in the Wasatch Mountains. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to try and find a shot of the Wasatch Mountains, and I just happen to have this shot sitting right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my arrow keys to get to the very beginning of that shot. First off, I already have an in and out point up here, and I can get rid of that in point and out point by hitting Alt-I and Alto, or I can just hit X. Once I hit the X key, my in and out both are gone. So now I'm on this frame where I want to start. So remember, my first two points, my in and out, are going to show the duration. And then up here, I'm going to set an end point because that's where I want it to start. I'm going to always hit the overwrite button on this one, the right bracket key. And the reason being is because of the fact that if you hit insert and if you're in a hurry while you're editing and you're a couple of frames over on a clip instead of at the very end of it, it's going to insert itself in and push those frames down to the end of that one. So you'll have what's called flash frames all over the place, and it'll just be hell trying to edit it. So if I use the right bracket key to overwrite under the timeline, then even if I'm one or two frames over on another clip, doesn't matter. It'll overwrite right over the top of it, and nobody will know the difference. So let's take a look and see how it looks. Utah Lake, located in the Wasatch Mountains in Utah. Okay, good. Now let's see. Let's set the endpoint here and see what With she says. The surface area of nearly 97,000 acres makes it the third largest body of fresh water west of the Great Lakes. Okay, I'm going to stop it there and hit an out point right there. And let's take a look and see if we can find another shot here that's more of the lake. I think I have a. Yep, I have one right here. What I'm going to do is I'm backing it up here. I'm going to get it right back to the beginning of that right there. Once again, I'm going to set an end point. I'm going to hit the right bracket key. And look at it. It's just like putting together a puzzle. I'm just putting it Utah right together. Lake, located in the Wasatch Mountains in Utah, with a surface area of nearly 97,000 acres, makes it the third largest body of fresh water west of the Great Lakes. At its northern tip, the lake... Okay, so here's another one right here. So I'm just going to set, and it's just as easy as this. In, listen. At its northern tip the lake's only river outlet is a piece of american history okay right there i'm going to set an out and i'm going to go find the river outlet right there that she's talking about and it's right here nope let's find it there it is right there 
So I'm going to bring this back right here to the beginning of that shot. Set my endpoint, and once again, right bracket key. And this is just as simple as I O, then set your endpoint, right bracket key. Just literally that easy. And so let's see if it sounds okay. At its northern tip, the lake's only river outlet is a piece of American history. This is the Utah Lake Pumping Plant. Oh, okay. So here we go. So I'm going to set my in and out right there because that's what my script tells me that it wants me to do. And then I'm going to get a shot right here of the pumping house or pumping plant. Excuse me. I said that incorrectly. All right. Go to the very beginning of it right there and set an end point. And then once again, right bracket key and drop it down. And this is what I do, guys, to set my B-roll. The lake's only river outlet is a piece of American history. This is the Utah Lake Pumping Plant. There's another type that I want to show you, back timing. In other words, I've been setting endpoints the whole time up in my source window up here because of the fact that I want to start from right there. But what if I want it to end at a certain point and then fill video in back? So let's do that. I'm going to set my endpoint here. When you first see the pump house, you might think this is a long forgotten building like so many others that were built over a hundred years ago. But looks can be deceiving. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set an out point right there. And let's go find a shot where it's got some movement in it, and I want to be able to end at a certain point. So here's this shot right here, and as you can see as I'm playing through it, it kind of sits for a moment. Then all of a sudden, it goes to this shot of the actual pump house itself, kind of doing a little bit of a reveal right there. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to back it up to the last frame of that right there. And here, instead of setting an end point, I'm going to set an out by hitting O. Now I want you to notice that my numbers here have gone red. And the reason they go red is because I've set an out point here, but I still had an end point down here. So by selecting Alt-I, I get rid of the end point and notice that the red goes away and it's sitting right there. So now I have my in and out down here. I have my out point sitting up here. And once again, I select the right bracket key. When you first see the pump house, you might think this is a long forgotten building like so many others that were built over a hundred years ago. And that's how you buy a back time. As you notice, as it's coming through, it's going to end right there where I had the shot. Now, I still don't like this. And the reason I don't like this is because of the fact that it's still sitting too steady at the very beginning of it, not giving me my movement. And so I want to have that movement through the entire shot. So instead of doing a back time right here, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Now, I can, once a track is selected, just by double clicking over a gap or over a clip, up here in the ruler, not down here on the, the actual timeline, but up here in the ruler, I can automatically set an in and out point. So I'm going to set an in and out point once again over that part where I just placed that. And up here, I've already got my out point, so I'm just going to back it up some, and I'm going to be watching it move here. And I'm going to get to about the point to where it first stops, right there. And now I'm going to set an in point. So now I have an in and out up here, and I have an in and out down on my timeline. And once again, using the right bracket key, I'm going to overwrite right over the top of it, and let's watch what happens. Utah Lake Pumping Plant. When you first see the pump house, you might think this is a long forgotten building like so many others that were built over a hundred years ago. But looks can be deceiving. Okay. Now, what I just did with this four-point edit, or fit to fill uh, is another way of saying it, is that by setting the in and the out up here, I set a duration up here. And then setting the in and the out down here, I set a duration down here. It just so happened that this duration was shorter in time than this duration on the timeline was. And so what happened was, is that this endpoint matched up with the endpoint down the timeline, and then the outpoint in my source window matched up with the outpoint on the timeline, and Eddie has automatically slowed the clip down enough to where the ins and outs would match up. Now, it works in the exact opposite also. If the clip up in the source window would have been longer than duration than the duration down here on the timeline, it would have sped up the video just enough to where the in and out point would match up perfectly. So basically, we've done a three-point edit of setting it in and out and placing it down. We've done a back timing of setting it in and out on the timeline. 
and then setting an out point up here in the source window and dropping it down to where the out points matched up and video filled into the end point. And now we've done a fit to fill or what Eddie has calls a four point edit to where I put an in and out both up here in the source and down here on the timeline and I was able to either slow down or speed up the video depending upon the durations.